stupid. <laughs> Fat. Fake. Arrogant. Beefy. Scripted. Liar. Cheater. Drunk. Poor kid. Smell like smoke. Poor eyes. Lazy eye. Immature. Young. Sinner. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jeremy Carson. I'm the high school youth pastor. Um, and there are many words that have defined me in my life, and that's just a few of them. You know, the words of bullies, evil-hearted teenagers, they were probably the worst on me. I heard a lot of stuff in middle school and high school that had a direct effect on who I am and the person I became. And even still, there's words I hear on a daily basis. Negative comments about law enforcement. Negative comments about pastors and preachers. Those define me and they help me wake up every day to be the person I want to be. Right? The right person. It was probably the nicknames I had in high school about my weight um, that had the most bearing uh, on what I have become as I've got older. Um, I'm sure if you look back in your past, you'll find a word or a comment in your memory bank uh, that's had a big effect on you. Maybe it changed you for the better. Maybe it changed you uh, for the worst. Maybe, maybe it had a negative effect on you. Whatever it was, um, if you're holding on to it, maybe you need to let it go, especially if it defines you. Um, you know, when I mention the names above and the ones I've been called, there's one particular that defines me now, and it's one that I have to keep up with every day, uh, and that's a sinner. A sinner. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I just come to you, God, to ask your Holy Spirit to fall upon this church, God, to fall upon uh, this message. God, speak through uh, me to, to bring a message, God, that would be uh, from you. God, today as we discuss identity, I hope everybody sees who they are and who they want to become and who they can become. God, we just love you. We thank you for Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. So words have power and meaning, right? Um, there's not a day that goes by in my life where I'm not concerned to some degree about my weight. And I know when y'all look at me, you probably don't see that. You probably don't get it. <clears throat> but when I was young, I was 100 pounds heavier than I am now. And I was made fun of daily. I was in middle school and I was as big around, I mean, I was just not proportionate. And I struggle with that identity. I do. I struggle with it. Because I was the chunky kid, right? And it's so hard to overcome those words that define me and that I identified as when I was young. So who are you? What's your identity? You know, each day you're writing a story about yourself. Um, and we allow others to influence that story in our lives. And those influences can be good, or they can be bad. But whatever it is, it's something that makes you identify as who you are. So I'm going to go to Ephesians chapter 4, and that's one we'll be preaching from today. Uh, verses 17 through 32. With the Lord's authority, I say this live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. And their minds are full of darkness. They wander far from the life of God, the life God gives, because they have closed their minds and hardened their hearts against Him. They have no sense of shame. They live for lustful pleasure and equally practice every kind of impurity. But that isn't what you've learned about Christ, since you've heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from Him. Throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So stop telling lies. Let us tell our neighbors the truth, for we are all parts of the same body. And don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry. 
For anger gives a foothold to the devil. If you are a thief, quit stealing. Instead, use your hands for good, hard work, and then give generously to others in need. Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful, so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, He has identified you as His own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God through Christ has forgiven you. So, people are evil, right? Humans, we're evil. We're born into sin nature. We're not good. Right? We're born evil. And especially when you look at people who don't live Christian lives or is unsaved, they, they can be harsh. They can be mean. We as Christians can be harsh and be mean. Uh, the Christian army, I, I've heard it said, is the only army that will shoot its own wounded in the foot. Right? When somebody's down, we make it worse. I look back on times when I was made fun of and criticized and bullied and brought down by people. And I know what defines me. Do you know what defines you? Right, okay, so I got this thing. And I'm the crazy youth pastor. And sometimes I am a while I'm crazy. I mean, Jake do some, some fun stuff. Um, but I'm going to have you close your eyes for just a second. And nothing's going to jump out. There's not going to be any surprises, okay? Nothing wild's going to happen. But I want you to lower your head and, and close your eyes for a second. Okay? And I want you to take a second and think over the course of your life. And, and even if you're young, this is, this is true for you. I want you to think about a negative person from your past. I want you to think about something they said to you. Okay? Or some, some reason that they, they were bad to you. Or some reason that they're a negative person in your head. If there's any resentment that you're holding on to that person... If there's a prayer you need to pray, if there's something you need to forgive, I want you to do that now. I want you to try to do that. I want you to just to, to try to let it go. Don't let that person or those people define you. Okay, now keep your head down. Keep your eyes closed. And I want you to think about your life. So we all have a person or persons who were good to us, who did something for us. Someone who made you feel special. Someone that impacted your life for the good. Maybe it's someone who helped you in school. Maybe it was a teacher. Maybe it was a friend that you shared secrets with or you're sharing secrets with, okay? Maybe it's someone who shared the Word of God with you. Or maybe it's someone you shared the Word of God with. Someone who planted a seed in your life. I would venture to say if I ask each one of you the name of the person or tell me a story about that person or something they did for you, you could do that. Okay, open your eyes. So, I'm pretty sure everybody came up with a person. Have you ever stopped to think you're somebody's person, right? You're somebody's person that they look at and you're good to them, right? Or maybe you're negative to them. Maybe you're their, their bad person, right? We all have people. We live in this time of, uh, of YouTube and, and things like that. Everything's video. Everything's recorded, right? Pretty much everything. You're always on video. People are always watching. <clears throat> Let's not forget the thing that's watching the most is people's eyes. They see your actions. They see your attitudes. They hear your words. They're watching your life. Right? People are watching this. I read uh, Ephesians, Ephesians 4.17. With the Lord's authority, I say this, live no longer as the Gentiles do, for they are hopelessly confused. You know, people are watching. And we live Christian lives. We come to church if we're saved and we live Christian lives. What are they seeing? How are they seeing our life? How do they identify us? Paul tells us not to live like unbelievers. We shouldn't live like unbelievers. There's got to be something different in the life of a Christian. We have to live a different life. I look back on my life and I can remember certain instances that led me to where I am now. So one in particular, when I was getting ready for this message, really stood out to me. And I remember when I was 13 years old, 
I was talking to my mom, and, and I told her, I said, Mom, I'm going to be a preacher. What? She's looking at me like, crazy. I think the reason she thought that, we didn't go to church all the time. Uh, we went. I remember the church helped us out through like, holiday seasons. The church, different churches gave us food. And we, we, you know, one of the words that defined me, we were, we were poor. That didn't work. He was disabled. You know, I have no idea why I told my mom I wanted to be a preacher. Looking back, you know, maybe it was the bullying I went through. Maybe those type of people made me want to be a better person or, or be a preacher. Maybe it was the broken relationship I had with my dad. I have no idea what it was. But I said it. My mom looked at me like I was crazy. But I remember that year for Christmas, my mom got me a study Bible. I had my name on it. It was a King James Version study Bible. I still have that Bible. It stays on the bookshelf now because it's King James Version. It's just too hard for me to read. I'm sorry. <laughs> Some of y'all still study. It's, it's tough. It's tough to read. But it's there. And it's special to me. So I want to fast forward a couple years. Here I am, 13. I want to be a preacher. 16, 17, 18, 19. Keep going for a couple more years. And I got bitter. I was angry. I went through depression, right? I had anxiety. They put me on medicine. I remember being on stomach medicine when I was in high school because I didn't want to get up and go to high school because I just couldn't handle it. I don't know if at that point I was atheist, agnostic, or one of them nuns. Not like a Catholic nun, but you know, the nuns we talk about that don't have a religion. I have no idea what I was. Regardless, I know that I was totally separated from God. I wanted nothing to do with God. And that was me for a few years. I questioned everything. I questioned so much. <clears throat> so when I was young, you 13, I'm going to be a preacher, I thought I was saved. I thought I thought I'm going to heaven. But when I look back at my life, and I realized who I am now, and how I got where I am, I wasn't. And I know if I would have died in my early 20s or late teens, I wouldn't have went to heaven. I know that. And I was living in darkness. I was totally separated from God. So where are you at today? You know, I thank God. I remember going to college and, and having some teachers that didn't really talk about faith, that they played it out in their lives. You just had to look. You had to see their fruit. And I thank God for sending those people into my life and planting seeds for me to become a Christian. Right? Not necessarily a preacher, but just to, to accept Jesus. To be ready to get baptized. Um, I thank Him for His divine plan because God has a plan. Right? It's just a matter of which seeds are we going to take and we're going to let follow through with in our lives. So what kind of Christian are you? You know, that's where, that's where I'm at today. What kind of Christian are you? Here's what I hear a lot, church. I hear this. What's it take to get to heaven? You've got to be a good person. Man, when somebody says that, it really sets me... I'm just It just burns me up. There's going to be a lot of good people in hell, church. It's just the way of it. It's not about being a good person. It's about following Jesus and living a life like Jesus. Reflecting Jesus. If you're a Christian, if you've accepted Jesus Christ, you have to start turning away from your former life, from the life that you live. And wake up every day renewed. Wake up every day ready to repent, right? We should repent. That's what Scripture tells us. We have to repent. We have to ask for forgiveness. Right? We have forgiveness through grace, but we have to ask for it. So it's 2020 now. We're in a new decade. Right? Everybody's excited. New decade. Um, how are you going to identify yourself this year? How are you going to identify yourself this Sunday? Not necessarily New Year. See, I'm not going to sit up here and tell you that Jesus is coming back tomorrow because I have no idea and that really... I can't give what people think that they know because Scripture clearly tells us nobody knows. But... He can come back today, tomorrow. I don't know. 
But you better be ready. You better be ready, church, because we don't know. Are you living a life to be more like Jesus Christ? Are you living a life that reflects Jesus? I know God wants us to be in His Word so that we can learn to be more like Jesus. So are you living out that Christian life daily? See, we live in a culture where identity is starting not to matter. Right? Whatever you want to identify as, you go for it. We got men that identify as women, women that identify as men. People identify as dogs and cats, turtles, other, other animals, whatever you think of. Whatever you can think of, there's somebody that probably identifies as that thing. Weather, like people identify as rain and clouds and rain clouds. It doesn't make sense. I'm not making this stuff up, church. Seriously, okay? We got men that identify as babies and wear diapers around, right? Call each other baby and daddy. Listen, I'm telling the truth because I've seen this stuff in Hampshire County, right? I've seen this stuff in Hampshire County. I've seen a lot of stuff. Right? It's real. People identify as babies. Can't make this stuff up. Man, it's only going to get worse, church. It's only going to get worse. We're taking, we're taking God out of everything. We got people talking about which bathroom they need to go to. Right? People can't even figure out which bathroom to go to. Every year we set rules for our teen camp. Right? We have set up rules for teen camp. And this past year, we're like, now let's set up these rules again. We had to put in the rules that campers had to go to the bathroom of the gender that's on their birth certificate. What? This is church camp. This is church camp. Go to the right bathroom. <sighs> Public schools, stuff happening there. That's how far society's declined, guys. People are just, they, they can't figure out how to identify. They can't. You got people addicted to drugs, people worshiping idols. Sexual immorality is running rampant through our modern culture. So when I was getting ready for this sermon, back in October, November, before that, Satan really started to work. Uh, and, and it didn't happen uh, when it was supposed to. It was a variation of this sermon. But it, it didn't happen uh, in November. Um, I lost my mother-in-law. Starla's mom passed away. So... We had to leave, and I didn't get to preach. And, and Satan was really working the, in the week, weeks leading up to when I was supposed to preach. It was just everything was going bad. Cars weren't working. Stuff was just happening. I was like, what is going on? It's just the way the devil works. But prior to that, I found, I don't, I'm not on Facebook very often, but when I do, something sometimes usually catch my eye, whether it's negative or positive. But there was a, a positive thing I saw. It was a, a scripture um, that somebody had posted, and I was like, I love this. i got to keep this. I'm going to use it in my sermon. So I'm going to read it to you. Um, it says, saw this posted this morning and had to repost. Uh, it's going to step on some toes, but it's, it's the truth. It says, Welcome to the world today where sex is free and love is expensive, where losing a phone is more painful than losing your virginity, where modernization means nudity, profanity, and if you don't drink or smoke, you're out of fashion. Where boys stay boys and never want to become men, and girls become men to rule over them. Where if you don't fool your partner, it's because you're not clever enough. Where the bathrooms have become photography studios, right? Where pizza delivery is faster than emergency response. I can't be everywhere, guys. I'm sorry. I can't fix that one. <laughs> where people fear thieves and terrorists more than God. Where worshiping God is difficult. Where temples turn into dating pools where lies become realities, where people become toxic when they speak the truth, or you're resisting to turn from what's actually toxic, where perspectives and clothes decide the value of a person, where money is more important than family and God, where children are ready to leave their families for love of the moment, rebellion, and spite, where the marriage covenant is no longer sacred or taken seriously, where it's easier to play house than to build a home, where jumping from partner to partner for sex or attention is easier than waiting for the right person for life. Where love is a game 
where evil no longer exists. Whoever plays with the mind always gets happiness. And whoever plays with the heart always hurts. Modernity, love, and liquid education. The new generation of humanity. And then it parallels 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 4. But know this, in the last days, perilous times will come, for men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure, rather than lovers of God. It hit me, guys. The preacher gets it first. When I read that, I was like, man, that hits home. That should hit everybody. It should hit you full force. Because a lot of times, guys, that's the church. That's the church. You know, the church, I feel like, not just this church, but in general, God's church, you know, the church of Jesus, we're not necessarily doing the unsaved any favors because we're not always identifying as Christians. Are we always standing up for what's right? Are we truly living as followers of Jesus and standing firm on the promises of what's written in the Bible? Right? Is this book the foundation of your home? If it's not, what is? Is it your status? Is it Facebook? Is it your title? Your job? Wealth? Maybe it's your Snapchat streaks. I don't have Snapchat. I know a lot of people do. And that really defines them because it's something they have to do every day. Wouldn't it be awesome if people cared as much as their Bible streaks, their Bible app streaks, as they did their Snapchat streaks? You know, if you get on your Bible app, it tells you how many days you've been in a row, right? Wouldn't that be awesome if that was as important as some of the things we do on a daily basis. So there's a famous TV pastor. I don't agree much with him. And I think many of his sermons are pretty much heresy. But I've listened to a few. And he starts them all with this quote. Right? He says, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today we'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess... My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. You're never going to hear me preach any prosperity gospel. You're never going to hear me say, if you follow this Word in this book, you're going to get rich. You're never going to hear me say that. You're never going to hear me say that when Jesus came, He made things easier. That He made our lives easier. He gave us grace. But by all means, things got harder. Because He made it a little bit harder. Right? He made, he made the words of the old law a little more relevant to things that we go through. Wouldn't it be awesome if every time we heard the Word of God, we were receptive Right? We were never the same. Every time we heard a sermon, every time we help a brother or sister in Christ, every time a brother or sister helps us, every time we prayed, every time we asked for forgiveness, if we did those things, what if it actually changed our heart? What if it actually changed us? What if we turned our hearts away from this world and turned our hearts towards God each and every moment? of our lives? What if we turned away from our sinful desires? What if we turned away from the routine daily sin that some people live in in the church? The routine daily sin, right? If this book in the Bible is the inspired Word of God and you believe that, if you follow this book, and you know how you were created. You should fear God. You should fear Him, church. God has not changed. Just because people can't figure out which bathroom to go to doesn't mean God has changed. He is the same God that was in the Old Testament. If you read the Old Testament, you will see 
what God has done. He is the same God that cannot be in the presence of any sin. He's the same God who sent a flood to this earth and destroyed mankind. He is the same God that rained down fire on Sodom and Gomorrah. Right? <clears throat> Don't be blinded by this modern culture and this land that we live in and this times that we live in and think God has changed because He hasn't. His Word says they don't ever change. So, I want you to think about this. I, I shared this with my high school class a few months ago. Some of them, I still keep the card. It's there on my podium in the classroom. And um, I pull it out every once in a while. Right? You're probably not going to see it because first service couldn't see it. But this is mine. I'm going to keep it in my pocket. i got one of these. My grace card. It just says grace. Just a notebook card. Right? Well, three by five. Grace card. I got one. We all got one, right? Grace card. So what I worry about when I tell them is it's not cheap grace. Grace isn't cheap. I don't think grace is intended to be used for those that are blatantly, actively engaging in sinful, destructive behaviors. Because God wants us to turn away from those kinds of behaviors and those kinds of things in our lives and change. He doesn't want us to pull this card all the time because we shouldn't have to. We shouldn't be living in active and actively engaging in sin all the time. So I got a brother in Christ, and, and a lot of times we share this scripture with each other, and it's just simple. Matthew 7, 21 through 23. I think it's on the board. Not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, perform many miracles in your name, but I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me. You who break God's laws. It says, depart from me. Another scripture. Depart from me, I never knew you. And that hurts. Whenever I read that scripture, I'll tell you what, when you walk down that hallway, me and the teens last year, we actually wrote scriptures down the hallway when the floor was up, if y'all remember that. You're walking on that scripture. You're walking on a lot of scripture. But that one to me is one that I wrote because it's one that I have to remember. Because I know that not all good people are going to be in heaven. And it's sad and it breaks my heart. Because I want to see every brother and sister in heaven that's in this room, that's in this church, that's in this county, that's in this country. Because that's what God wants. But I hear people saying, you can't judge me. Right? People live in sinful lives. You can't, you can't judge me. Don't judge me. So we can see people's fruit. Right? We can see people who bear fruit. We can see people who bear good fruit and bad fruit. We can see people that live in blatant sin because they come out and they're like, hey, here's what I'm going to do. And I don't care what you think. So, church, I don't think it matters if we sit here and tell someone that they're living in sin or that they're engaging in sin when we see it because it's not going to change them. See, only the, the only thing that can change that is the heart and accepting Christ and wanting to follow Christ and wanting to identify and reflect Jesus Christ. Right? People have to have a heart change. People have to have a heart change. I don't care if you judge somebody. Because you're, if you judge, so, you know what most people do? They put their sins on Facebook or Snapchat, right? And then they try to hide their sins from God, right? I'll go into this little place here. God can't see me here. God can't see me over here. Better run behind the palace. God can't see me here. And God can see you. He's watching. He's watching. So we need to be worrying about what the world sees. We need to think about what the world sees. What does God see? What are we teaching people? What's the church doing for others? And there's people outside the church that we're trying to evangelize. Right? We're trying to evangelize people. What are we teaching those people? What are we showing them in our lives? 
Are we showing them that we're a bunch of hypocrites that come to church and we never actually live out Christ in our daily lives? I hope not. Are we showing them that it's okay to have that come to Jesus moment where you come to Jesus? You're like, I'm going to church this Sunday. I got this. I'm going to go to church. I'm going to pray a prayer. I'm going to get baptized. And then I'm going to go out and live the exact same life that I lived before because now I have Jesus. Now I have grace. So I'm going to pull my card out and do whatever I want. Is that what God wants? Is that what He wants from us? I don't want to see people get saved and come to church one time and watch them walk out that door and go back to living a life of sin. Man, I don't want that for people. I don't think this church does either. We don't, we don't need to do that. We don't need to watch that. What we need to do is put one of these in people's hands. We need to talk to people. We need to tell them about Jesus. Tell them what Jesus has done for you. I know what He's done for me. I don't want people going back to the same lives that they live. Sinful lives. Hey, we all sin. I'm not, I'm not up here telling you you're not going to sin and you can't pull this grace card out. I'm just up here telling you that grace isn't cheap. It was paid for by the blood of my Jesus. And when I say my Jesus, He's my Jesus. Right? And when you put your hand here, He's your Jesus too. He's your Jesus. And it wasn't free. And He died. He was beaten. He was bruised. Oh, he was lashed. He had to carry a cross. He had to die so that we could have this grace that we have. It's not cheap. Don't water it down. Don't water, don't water down grace. I will tell you that this book and knowing and loving Jesus can change your life because I know it did mine. And this isn't necessarily my testimony today. But somewhat, it, it kind of is because if I wouldn't have found this book and had people in my life that came and planted seeds and gave me the Word of God, I would not be anywhere good today. That's for sure. I wouldn't have a family. I wouldn't have Jake down here. I wouldn't have a, a ministry. I wouldn't be in this church, that's for sure. It was Jesus that got me there. It's a choice. And everyone has that choice. Please live out a life where you identify and reflect like Jesus. Where people see Jesus in you. Where your actions, your attitudes, your words, your thoughts are like that of Jesus. If you don't know how Jesus thought or acted, read it. Read the New Testament. So it's 2020, New Year, right? Are you going to let people live out? Or are you going to let people see you living out? A life like Jesus. Here, send it. Come here. She just wants her daddy. I told Starla, I said, I can preach with a baby. I've done it before. Right? I can preach with a baby. It actually gives me more to preach about because I can tell you that I wouldn't have this little baby girl if I would have never had Jesus. I wouldn't have my family. I, I wouldn't. And this, this, is, this is why I do what I do for these, right? To live a life like Jesus. I want to I wanna share Jesus with my family. I want to share Jesus with you all. So are you willing this new year, this new decade, whatever you want to call it, to change your life? Are you willing to lay down your daily life, whatever you're struggling with, whatever, if there's any sin in your life that you know you're struggling with and you just can't get over it, are you willing to lay it down for Jesus? Would you give up lustful pleasures of the world, of your heart? Would you give up 
sinful nature if you can, whatever you're struggling with? Would you quit using your grace card like it's a cheap Hallmark card that you get at Christmas and you're like, pull off little pieces of it? And do you ever make one of those, uh, like a, I made one for my mom, like free house cleaning, notebook, free dishwashing? Did anybody ever do that? Because I did. But that's not how this card should be. It shouldn't be you get a free one every time you do, but try not to use them. You get them all the time. They're so free. You know, every time you start to fall into a trap, because we know Satan, set, set, he sets traps each and every day for us, right? He sets traps. When you start to fall into those traps he set for you, think about the price that was paid for the grace that you have. It wasn't free. Think about the cost. Think about the blood of Jesus. Read God's Word and see what the price was. Ephesians 4, 20-24. read this earlier. It isn't what you learned about Christ. Since you've heard about Jesus and have learned the truth that comes from Him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life, which is corrupted by lust and deception. Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Since you've heard about Jesus and have learned the truth and what comes from Him, throw off your old sinful nature and your former way of life. You've all heard it. Some of you have been in church your whole lives. Right? Some of us haven't. Some of us, this could be our first time. I don't know. I don't know your story. I don't know your identity. But I know what God wants for you. He wants you to be like Him. Paul was reading um, our devotion earlier uh, before first service. And he was talking about the wind, the, the trees, like clapping in the wind, like clapping. And how the trees glorify God. Even the trees glorify God. Right? Everything was created to glorify God. Like these things. <laughs> right? They were. We were all created to glorify God. Everything out there, the grass, was created to glorify God. That's what God intended was His own glory because He is worthy of all that praise. So change your life. If you have something you need to change, do it. If you don't, you're good. But do everything you can to follow Jesus. Lay down your life, pick up your cross, and follow Jesus. That's my desire today, church. That's my desire for you in 2020. That's my desire for all our lives. Preacher gets it first. All right? I'm going to have the praise team come back out. There's someone back there. They were supposed to be out already. No, I haven't. It's all right. I'll keep preaching all day, won't you? Tell them. We'll do baby shark. <laughs> Can y'all do baby shark? No. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So today, if you have a need, if you have a prayer, we're going to have prayer partners around. They'll come pray with you. Or you can come pray with them. Guys, try to be like Jesus. Let's all try to be like Jesus. Let's share Jesus with others. That's how we all should identify. Let's pray.